So today I'm going to teach you how to do rib imaging. Um, this in x-ray is usually something that's a little bit difficult for students and technologists that are in the working field alike, simply because instead of like typical procedures that we do, for example, let's say the hand, when you get an order for ribs, you don't get positions like with a hand, you have your PA, your oblique, and your lateral. You usually just get an order that says x-ray ribs. And it's our job as the technologists for when that patient comes to ask and do good communication skills to figure out exactly where the pinpoint or the epicenter of that pain is living. And from that epicenter, get two really good images of it, uh, both an AP or PA and its associated oblique. Since I have had a lot of experience with seeing students struggle with this, I want to make a little how-to video. This is how I teach how to do ribs um, because I think it makes it really easy and even clearer than sometimes the book does for you. So um, it's a two-step process. Step one is going to tell you whether you're working AP or PA, and step two is going to be which oblique you would do with the associated AP or PA. Typically also in the world, I don't know if this is all widespread, so if you're coming from somewhere other than my classroom, hey, welcome. Um, but typically where I've worked up in Minnesota, we do a chest image and then those two rib images. So just know you'll likely do that as well, um, at least if you're in this area. Um, so step one is your pain is going to face the image receptor. And again, that step is going to tell you if you're doing an AP image or a PA image. So I have my little skeleton, Shannon, here, Shannon Wilson Bell. <laughs> um, and if I was working and this was my patient and they said that they had pain right here, which again, this would be the left anterior side of the patient, I would need to turn my patient around so that the pain was facing the image receptor. So step one would tell me that my patient would be in PA. So again, step one for pain that was right here in that left anterior side, that would mean step one, pain faces towards the board. So the first image you would take would be just a PA image, okay? Step two is again the one that tells you your associated oblique. So there is two ways this can go, obviously. If you're in PA, pain is away. I like that one because it kind of flows really nice. PA, pain away when you say it. AP, pain against. Well, that one doesn't sound as fun, but if you can remember PA, pain away, you're in good shape. And that's in reference to the image receptor or your upright bucky, whatever you're working on. So again, my patient here had left anterior pain. So PA away means the side of pain needs to now be directed away from the image receptor. So for left anterior pain, you would put your patient into an RAO position because the left side of the patient would be away from the IR. Okay? So RAO and PA is what you would do just as an example for your left anterior pain. If I had pain, if my patient just walked over right now and they said that they had left posterior pain, I would do step one, face that patient towards the image receptor. And again, step one would tell me that I was doing an AP. Once I completed my AP and I had to do my associated oblique, I would do AP, paint against the image receptor, and I would put that left side down and do an LPO. So for left posterior pain, the two projections that you would do would be AP and LPO, okay? So I'm just gonna move Shannon for a moment. This is the little step thing, but I'm gonna do one more kind of example of another way you can think about it that can kind of help you as well. So if you need a screenshot or if you're taking notes to help you remember, this is going away now. The other thing that can be really helpful, and I know when you go out to clinical, if you're not a working tech yet, that you can't take notes or have your books out or anything. But if you can do this enough in practice to remember this, this can be kind of helpful. So let's just write it out. So you're imagining we did left anterior rib pain. And we did 
left posterior rib pain. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on one at a time. So step one, I'm just going to put them up in the corner. I'll put them over here so that I'm not covering them. Step one, pain faces IR, and that again tells us our AP or PA. And then step two, which tells us our obliques, is going to be PA equals pain away, and AP equals pain against. And this is just a good exercise for you to do when you're studying this and practicing this, because these kind of questions could be asked in your didactic material as well. So if I have a patient with left anterior rib pain, I'm actually going to start with posterior pain because I feel like it's slicker with posterior. So this is just a trick to help you with your positioning, okay? So left posterior rib pain. What I do if I have this written out or if I imagine it written out, just add the word oblique to the end, okay? So I'm trying to figure out what positions to do. If, this is just again a trick, if you underline the side of interest, the anterior or posterior portion, and then that O that from that oblique that you've added, once you find out this is AP, again posterior automatically means AP. Once you've figured out this is AP from getting that posterior information, L, P, Oh, it actually spells out the position that you're going to do, okay? So if you can remember when you get pain, to think, either think it out into this sentence structure with a week at the end, or um, if you have the opportunity to write it down in such a manner, if you are doing an AP projection underlying the side of interest, the anterior posterior portion, in this case this works again for posterior, and that O, and you have the position for your oblique that you're going to need to do. It's not too much more challenging for your PA, but again, we have anterior pain here, so we know we're going to have to do PA. And then add that oblique at the end, just to help us think about the oblique that we'll have to do. And again, underlying your side, your anterior, posterior, and oblique. And if you can remember, that when it's anterior, cross out your side and change it from whatever, left to right or right to left, vice versa, depending on which one you have. You again spell out the position that you're going to have to do for your oblique. So R-A-O. So the only extra step with this is just cross out that side or switch it to the opposite side. Some people don't like this way. Some people just think the two-step method is good enough. This can be really helpful with the didactic learning. Um, some of my students really like it. But that is how you can plan what projections you're going to do for an, a patient. I mean, for example, I'll just do one more really quick. If you have someone come in to your clinic and they say, that they have pain and you ask them where it's at and they go right here okay so while you're setting up for a second you can just stand right back by the console for a second and just write out once you're paid tag probably not while you're i mean you could probably do it as a student if you weren't copying but otherwise you could write right anterior rib pain And then again, I'm just going to do it in a different color just so you guys can reiterate that stuff. I'm just going to write oblique at the end because I know that that's what I'm going to have to be figuring out as well at the end. And I'm doing anterior, so that's going to mean that I'm doing a PA. And then I underline my side, my anterior, posterior, or my O. Since it's anterior, I'm crossing out that side and I'm switching it to the opposite side. So I'm going to do a PA 
and a PALAO for that series. Okay, hopefully this helps you figure out ribs. Hopefully you can see a good view of my cat, if not, that sneeze was her and her throwing tape. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions at all. That is how you perform your rig rib exams.